shit. Hey, this is Damien from Top 5 E-Bikes. We got another awesome review for you today. Uh, today I'm gonna talk about another Ambride's bike. This is the Razorback. So the Razorback is another supercharged bike in the lineup, uh, in the Ambride's lineup. So this one is their mid-drive bike and it's foldable just like the, the Volt 1500 watt. So the cool thing about this e-bike is it comes with a Bafang Ultramax motor. And that kicks out 160 Newton meters of torque. So it's just like the super, it's way torquier than any motor we've ever test driven. So this, this Bafang motor that packs 160 Newton meters of torque, you know, it's, there's actually, I'm not gonna lie, there's, there's a bit of a learning curve with this motor um, and really with all mid-drive motors because mid-drive motors provide so much more torque by than rear hub motors um, they just they're more efficient right because the power is coming from the crank itself right not in the rear wheel so you actually have to be really careful with a bike this powerful with a motor this powerful I know for a fact that David Brand New had this bike before me, he snapped the chain. Um, and that's really easy to do with mid-drive motors. Um, again, because they provide a lot more torque than, uh, than typically rear hub motors. And, um, and they just, there's a lot more wear and tear that happens on a mid-drive. That's one of the downsides to mid-drive, but if you notice, when you're shopping for mid-drive e-bikes, the motors aren't, they don't usually have big motors. Usually they're like 250 watts or 500 watts. That's really all you need because they're just higher efficiency, right? So, you know, those rear hub motors, they make up for not being as efficient by just being bigger, bigger motors, right? So I'm, I'm trying, I'm trying to do a review of this video. I'm trying to film, I'm trying to ride, but it's kind of challenging. There's, there's, there's just no way around it. Like I'm still learning how to shift this bike, right? To get the, I don't want to like wear out this chain. I don't want to wear out the, the drivetrain on this bike. I have to send it back, right? It's not even my bike, technically. So I'm trying to, it's a little bit of a learning curve, right? Like I'm used to, and I think, I'm gonna say this is kind of an advanced e-bike. So big shout out to Mike Atoll <laughs> for his e-bike school videos. So I had to watch a video today on how to shift a mid-drive bike because it's not really that intuitive. Um, if you've never done it, uh, I suggest you read about it, you watch a video. The last thing you wanna do is damage your you know, $3,000, $4,000, you know, $10,000 e-bike. And these mid-drives, those are the most expensive e-bikes, right? You want to talk about like a recent Mueller e-bike, you know, some of the specialized ones, the giant ones, they are pricey, right? And usually they have mid-drive motors because like I said, those are the most efficient motors and those are the ones that generate the most torque. So one thing I learned today from that Micah Toll video, when you ride an e-bike that has a mid-drive motor, it's actually very bad to ride in the highest gear the whole time, right? The se seventh gear or eighth gear, um, you know, that's the torquiest gear, right? That's the gear I ride in the most. When I'm riding a rear hub bike, uh, which is basically all I ride, uh, those are all the bikes we get, right, <laughs> to review. like. That's the most fun gear, because that's the, the gear you go the fastest, right? And when you have a big motor, 
you know, there's no stopping you on a hill, right? If you have enough momentum, you can fly up that hill. And that's, that's how I ride. That's usually how I like to ride. And then, you know, I usually ride single speed bikes, you know, single speed, no, one, one gear, right? And it's usually a high, a high torque gear, right? So that to me is, is what it feels like to ride. That's natural to me for, for an e-bike, for any bike. But on an e-bike, on a mid-drive motor, there's additional considerations. Because now, you're, now, if you ride too much in, in that high gear, you're gonna wear out the drivetrain much faster. And I think he said in the video that he's seen people wear out the drivetrain after 100 miles. 100 miles is nothing, man. You can, you can put 100 miles on an e-bike and you know, in a week, easy. And like I said, if you spent 3,000, 4,000 plus, you don't want that thing to wear out in a week. So right now, I'm riding in Pedal Assist 2, and I have it in eco mode because I don't want to drain the battery too much. I don't want to get stranded like I did when I was trying to drain test the, the Volt. So I, I, this is a huge bike. This bike, this bike with both batteries, by the way, this bike comes with two batteries, right? It's got a rear battery and, a, and, a, and an integrated battery. So with both batteries, this bike weighs 95 pounds. So you do not want to run out of battery with the 95 pound bike. So that's kind of where I am right now. But I'll tell you how I'm, how I'm pedaling. I'm going up a hill going up a hill right now I'm in pedal assist level two and you know I'm actually gonna kick it up to number three pedal assist three and I'm feeling a little bit of the burn and I have it in some of the I have it in level in gear four right now so like fourth gear kind of on the uh, on the higher side but it's nice it's nice pedaling on this bike it definitely feels very efficient. Okay, so now I'm in, I'm in pedal assist four, right? But I'm going 22. So at 22 miles per hour, you know, you're, you're kind of, you're riding free and easy. It's okay to be in the highest gears, right? It's, it's okay to be in seven or eight. And that's, uh, you don't have to worry about damaging your, your drivetrain on those gears when, when, you, when you've already reached that top speed. But if you're at a stop sign, right, you have to downshift, that's a thing. So that's like a new, that's a new skill, right? That, that's, that's, a, a, that's a new wrinkle when you're riding a mid-drive bike, right? You have to actually think about, you kind of have to think on your feet. It's kind of like driving a stick shift, right? Where you come to a stop sign, you gotta shift down, fourth gear, third gear, two, second gear, right? Before you get to that stop sign it's kind of similar with this bike so if I forget to shift down and I'm on flat ground and I have it on pedal four if I have it on the highest level of pedal assist and also on the highest gear that's where you snap your chain that's what that's when you can do the the damage that I'm talking about so I'm about to oh, see I'm coming to a stop sign right now I'm in gear six so now I gotta, gotta shift down. All right. Good, good, here we go. California stop. So another thing you're not supposed to do, I learned today, you're not supposed to shift when you're in the highest levels of pedal assist. You're not supposed to shift mid throttle, right? Or, or mid push where you're really engaging the motor. So you kind of have to ease off a little bit. So like I said before, the Razorback comes with two batteries, right? So the integrated battery is 48 by 14 amp hours, 48 volt by 14 amp hours. And then the, the rear battery is 48 by 21 amp hours. Um, so I don't know, I can't do math in my head, but together, that's over 1300 watt hours of uh, a battery life. But the thing that's cool about this e-bike is it's free and easy to pedal because, you know, the, the, the torque is so high on this motor. You don't really need to be in pedal assist, even three, 
or even four, definitely not four or five. I mean, if you want to be, you know, setting speed records or whatever, this bike supposedly can get up to 34. I haven't, I haven't been able to, but I haven't had the bike that long. But yeah, if you wanted to keep it in level assist four or five, but like I said, I'm in level assist, pedal assist level two and I'm cruising, right? It's pretty, it's, it's pretty nice to pedal. I think I'm ready to give you the verdict on this bike. You know, maybe it's just I'm not used to driving mid-drive motors. Maybe, maybe if I get to the point where I master a mid-drive motor and shifting and bouncing between the power and the pedal, the levels of pedal assist, balancing between how much power to give the motor, how much pedal assist to assign when you're pedaling versus what gear. I mean, honestly, it's a lot to think about. And, you know, when you're on an e-bike and you're, you're going fast and, you know, to me, e-bikes, well, all bikes, they're about having fun. And I'm having my most fun when I'm probably biking when I'm moving fast. And, but at the same time, when I'm moving fast, I'm very focused on the road. I'm very focused on my surroundings. I'm very focused on what's going on because I don't want to hit something, right? I don't want to end up in an accident. When you add this element of shifting and this maybe anxiety about, you know, putting too much stress or strain on the motor or breaking your chain. Like, I don't want to be thinking about that when I'm right. Like, I just want to have fun. And I think the rear hub bikes that I've driven, that I've ridden, you know, I like biking in the highest gear, not, not having to worry about changing the gears and then just letting the, the motor and my legs do the work, right? Because your legs are still doing a lot of work, especially if you're going up hills, especially if you're biking long distances. But that rear hub motor makes you feel like you're Superman, right? And that's kind of the, the fun of, of e-bikes, I think. With this one, I will say, you know, you don't have to have it in the highest gear, right? Like you can, like I have it in, in the second or third highest right now. I think, yeah, I think I have it in six right now. And I have a, on pedal assist level four and I am very gently cruising at 26 miles per hour. So, and if I was happy to just go, you know, 20, right? 18, 20. You could be in pedal assist one or two, and maybe, you know, fourth gear, fifth gear, and you're good, you're golden all day. Uh, you don't really have to make too many accommodations. Uh, you don't really have to shift or think, think about it too much. So, you know, I think that's kind of, maybe that's the secret, is you just find that comfortable gear and you just stay in that gear. But like right now, I just, I just had to pull off from the road very quickly. I forgot to downshift. But like, that's, that's what happens when you're riding, right? You can't plan for every, every occurrence. So my advice to anyone that's thinking of getting this bike, really any mid-drive motorbike is, you know, see if you can practice on someone else's bike, if you can. Uh, practice on a mid-drive bike, practice on one that maybe, you know, has a less powerful motor. This is a 160 Newton meter motor. So I don't think this is the bike you, you practice on. I don't think this is your, this should not be your first mid-drive motorbike. If it is, you gotta really take it slow and you gotta really get comfortable. You gotta get really comfortable shifting um, and don't just blast out of the gates, level four, level five, and try to set speed records because you could potentially end up throwing money down down the drain uh, and then you have to replace your drivetrain and that's not going to be cheap so one thing that's cool about a mid-drive is the torque sensor right so this bike has a torque sensor um, so you know usually cadence sensor is standard for e-bikes but this one torque sender sensor so you get immediate responsiveness when you when you pedal right when you push on the crankshaft um, what else can I tell you about this e-bike 
It's got the, this one has the V Commander tires, these beefy off-road tires. I think they're an upgrade. Um, this one has the BMX style handlebars. Um, it's got a suspension seat post. Uh, what else does it have? This one, I think, is part of the Elite package, which the Elite packages start at $3,550 and go up to $3,700. It's got that uh, real sexy oversized motorcycle light on the front. Uh, that's part of the Elite package along with the, uh, the handlebars, the BMX bars. So yeah, my final thoughts on this bike. I mean, it's a really fun bike. It feels like I'm, I'm on the Incredible Hulk, like the beefiness of this frame, right? It's kind of like a tank. The, you know, the high torque, the power, like I mentioned, 160 Newton meters of torque in this uh, 1000 watt, 1500 peak watt buffeting motor, right? And as I said before, because it's a mid-drive, you know, it's able to kick out just those extreme levels of torque, right? But again, you gotta be careful with the mid-drive motor, especially one that's that generates so much torque. So, so I would say you would only get this bike if you're kind of an advanced rider. Um, I wouldn't, I definitely wouldn't make this my first e-bike. It's kind of expensive for a first e-bike. You know, over 3,000, up to 3,750, up to 3,700. So, you know, this is this is more of an advanced rider's e-bike. It's got the the off-road tires. It's got the beefy V Commander tires. Uh, it's got suspension. It's got front suspension uh, and uh, suspension posts for the seat. I mean, it's fun to ride. Definitely, don't get me wrong. Uh, and it feels like you can cruise. It's very, it's a very cruisable bike, I would say. But if you take, I bet you really. I wish I had time to take this off road, and I, maybe I would have a totally different view of this bike if I was able to, you know, really experience it off road. But also, off road bikes, this powerful, they're scary as hell. <laughs> they're really scary, and you really have to. Uh, you really have to know what you're doing when you're riding one of those bikes. Shit. So I did it guys, look. I snapped the chain. I snapped the chain, look at that. This whole video, I'm talking about how you should ride a mid-drive motor cautiously so you don't snap a chain, so you don't put too much stress. And what do I do? I snap the chain. So if that doesn't illustrate, if this doesn't illustrate that there's a steep learning curve in riding a mid-drive e-bike, I don't know what does. Yeah, two influencers, two YouTubers, Two busted chains on this bike. I'm sorry, Josh. I did my best, man. I watched the video. I listened to Micah Toll. I did what he told me. I was in level two and, and I tried to use a throttle from a stop sign and I should have not done that. I should have been in level one when I used the throttle. And then the other thing was I was in too high a gear. So I was in too high a gear, but I was in flat ground. So I thought I was, I was good, right? But I was in flat ground at a stoplight. This is a heavy bike. So I think most people, you know, they're in that situation. They're gonna wanna throttle out. That's a really normal maneuver when you have an e-bike, especially a heavy e-bike. You're gonna throttle out of the intersection. Well, I did, but I was in, one of the higher gears. I wasn't in the highest. I wasn't even in the highest. I was in the sixth gear. Sixth gear, I hit throttle, boom, the chain snapped. So I stand by what I said. I would not get a mid-drive bike for that reason, right? For the fact that 
Or if I did, maybe, maybe this motor is too powerful. Maybe this chain is not a strong enough chain. Because I'm gonna, I, I guarantee lots of riders are gonna do what I just did. They're gonna try to throttle out from a stop sign. They're gonna be in level two maybe. Some of them probably level three, level four. Cause that's, you know, that's how you would normally do it in a rear hub drive bike. And people are gonna snap their chains, so. Yeah guys, don't snap your chain. If you enjoyed this review, please subscribe to our channel and leave us a comment. Visit us at top5ebikes.com or some of our social media accounts. Thank you.